Hello and welcome to this video on the Folio Society's limited edition series of Cherished Tales. So far, six have been released in this series and I'll be covering four in depth. The first to be released in the series was the limited edition of the classic children's story Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, illustrated by Charles Van Sanderick in 2008. Three years prior to this, a non-limited edition had been released and you can see in the picture the size difference as I have the standard folio books on either side of the limited editions. The first I heard about the new Wind in the Willows was a delightful letter I received in the mail addressed to Folio Society members and signed by Toad Esquire. In the letter, Toad explains how he believes that for the 100th anniversary a special lavish birthday edition should be produced and he's invited Mr Van Sandrick to stay with him at Toad Hall to work on further illustrations. It's absolutely charming. The limited centenary edition itself is spectacular and no expense was spared by Folio Society to make this the most enchanting edition possible. It's presented in a cloth-bound Salander box. Wait, is that cat fur on my expensive book? The spine is blocked in 22 karat gold, with vellum tips and paper sides blocked in three shades of metallic foil. The letterpress end papers show an architectural plan of Toad Hall. The book is hand bound in quarter vellum, limited to a thousand copies, and each book contains a limitation spread with a signed hand printed etching. The calligraphy was printed letterpress by the Logan Press. The layout was completely redesigned to allow for 40 new pen and ink illustrations and two new colour plates. The 16 colour plates are all tipped in by hand with gold edges and exquisite gold borders. There are new chapter heads and tails as well as charming hand drawn captions. Two thousand and nine saw the next volume in this series released in the bicentenary of the birth of Edward Fitzgerald, being the poetic quatrains of his Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Common design features we see in this series are again a vellum quarter binding, spine blocked in twenty-two garret gold, vellum tips, and front board blocked in three metallic shades with the design by the artist.
The end paper's a letterpress, and the book was printed on Hello Matt art paper by Beacon Press. There's a hand-printed etching and several delightful hand-drawn sketches along with 16 exquisite colour plates by the artist Nurut Pitapipat. It includes the original introduction and notes by Edward Fitzgerald, as well as an introduction by A.S. Byatt. Each quatrain is a meditation on the fleeting nature of life. The quatrains are set in 24-point castle with a gilded top edge and ribbon marker. Nerud's illustrations are what makes this volume special. His pictures are beautifully detailed and rich in texture, capturing the opulence of the poem. They're filled with the rich lapis blue and gold decoration that's such a feature of Eastern art. However, at 220 pages long, you definitely notice there are a great many blank pages included in the design of the limited edition. A standard edition was released the following year, which is quite similar in content, but a different layout and a much slimmer volume. In 2010, the Folio Society released The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, illustrated by Harry Brockway with 16 colour plates. This volume has also been released in a standard edition. This was followed by Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift in 2011, with 17 tipped in colour plates by Peter Seward. And then, in 2012, Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling was released. This features 14 tipped in colour illustrations and numerous embedded line drawings by Narut Pudapipat. Another delightful piece of ephemera for this edition was a collection of reviews by the animals from the stories.
The most recent addition to be released is Lewis Carroll's classic Alice in Wonderland, illustrated by Charles Van Sandwijk. This book won the Book of the Year Award in 2016. It features 11 Tipton colour plates and 9 paper scraps. The scraps are small Tipton illustrations printed on art paper and individually pasted in the book. They hark back to the Victorian pastime of pasting small cut out pictures into albums or scrap. Each chapter features hand-drawn initials, all different and intertwined with motifs from the chapter in question. There are an additional 50 embedded line drawings printed in black and gold ink on Ambassador Cream twin wire laid paper. Alice is famous for its linguistic jokes, and this sense of fun is reflected in the illustrations and typography of this edition. Lord, this video was really long. Did anybody actually watch through to the end? If so, you're a champion. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time.